As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. We're with the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. Is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Yo, you're in for a treat, so hang on to your seat. Get ready for adventure and remarkable weeks. You'll meet the Koopas and Troopers, the Princess and the others. Hanging with the plumbers, you'll be hooked on the brothers. To the What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played or the shows based on the games we played back in the shows based that we watched on the games. The shows based on the games that we watched back in the day. Uh, easy for me to say. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 272. And we're doing something very special. Here on Remember the Game, as you can probably tell by that horrible five seconds of intro. I wanted to cover Burnout Revenge this week, uh, but with the extra live stream this past weekend, we just couldn't line the recording schedule up. And for the record, Burnout Revenge is coming next week. Don't worry. Or at least that's the plan. Well, hopefully it all lines up this week. But then I thought to myself, self, do you need to lose some weight? But also, we should talk about the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Because if you grew up in that era, you watched that show. It was practically religion. I know it was for me. So that's what we're doing this week. As you could probably tell from the dope-ass music you heard a couple of minutes ago, we're talking the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Quickly, before we get into that, I, just, I have to say thank you to everyone that came by and or supported my extra live stream this weekend. As of right now, we've raised about 28,000 Canadian dollars, which is fucking insane. And uh, I'm just so grateful to everyone that was a part of, a part of it. Excuse me. Um, not to, I really don't mean to discount anybody that donated. Uh, I have to shout out Carbon Fiber Zombie, Ian Bruce, and Juris Dr. Mario, who all made just incredibly generous donations uh, I don't know if they want their numbers made public so I'm not going to but just very big numbers and I again I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone else that donated whether you gave a dollar ten dollars a hundred dollars a thousand dollars it's not a competition it all adds up it's all going to help the kids and I just thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you uh quick heads up the donation link is still up 
at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. And you can actually have until the end of the year to donate, but you have until November 19th to make a donation of $20 or more, and you'll be entered into some prize draws. I'll be doing those draws the week of November 20th. I'll be giving away a couple of video games, and I'll be giving away some Remember the Game swag. Uh, just throw 20 bucks at the kids. You also get a tax receipt. It's not a scam. I wish it. I wish I got a portion. I wish it was a commission charity thing, but it is not. It's all going to the kids. Thank you so much again, everybody. You can donate at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. Okay, back to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I was actually sent these DVDs by a listener a couple years ago, and and fuck me. I am so sorry that I don't have your name here. I, I know I wrote back, and I know I thanked you. A lot of stuff gets sent here, and I have a memory like a Kotaku in the sense that it's shit. So I just, I'm so, God, I'm sorry that I can't shout you out personally, but thank you so much for the gift. And I sat down and started watching them this weekend uh, to get ready for this episode, and it just it just took me back to being a kid. The, the sound effects, the horrible animations, Mouser, and how fucking awesome he is, and of course, Captain Lou Albano as Mario the Mario of my childhood, the Mario of so many of our childhoods. I could not get enough of this show as a kid. And I gotta say, I didn't hate watching it as an old man now. I, I frankly, it took too long to get this episode on Remember the Game, and it's time to do the Mario and show this show the respect that it deserves. My guest this week is my pal Bradley McHugh, and this was genuinely one of the most lighthearted and fun episodes we've done in a long time. We recorded this early Monday morning. I'm not usually a... I want, I like mornings, but I don't usually want to record in the morning. This was like a, as good as a cup of coffee. This was just such a great pick-me-up. And what was really cool was that Bradley and I both experienced this show in two very different ways at two very different times. And uh, we both have the exact same nostalgic love for it. When something's good, it's good forever, my friends. So we're going to get to the Super Mario Brothers show in just a minute. Super Mario Brothers Super Show in just a minute. Because speaking of something being good forever, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game Infamous intro. (laughs) If you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard and consider this your warning. Our intros are long, but they're fun. And, uh... You know, it's easy. It's almost as easy as skipping scenes on a DVD. You just pick up your phone and you just slide the little thing up to about 30 minutes and then you'll be into the Mario talk and we're golden. But hang around. We talk video games and stuff. It's a really good time. I I recommend giving the intro a chance. I have to do my plugs. It's how I keep the bills on. We have merchandise. We have hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters, all kinds of stuff, rocking incredible art drawn by my man Joe from 4545creative.com. You can find all that at rememberthegamepodcast.com. If you're interested, it's a great way to support the show. And of course, if you don't like clothes... Maybe check us out on Patreon. Subscriptions start at $3 a month. All of our podcasts are available on Spotify now. Thank fuck. You don't have to use that app to listen if you don't want to. And uh, we, have, you can also add them to just about every other podcast service. Spotify was the, the late bloomer. But now it's there too. And if you didn't know, we offer four extra ad-free podcasts a week. Every Monday, Mark McHugh and I talk to The Simpsons on Purple Monkey Dishwasher. Every Tuesday, I talk about whatever the fuck I want on The Rambling Idiot, which is my vlogging podcast. Every Friday, it's Game Patch. It's my modern gaming news show where I talk about the biggest stories in games, give you some sales picks, etc. And every Thursday, it's Expansion Pass, which is a different gaming show each week. We do rankings, we look back at characters, genres, consoles, generations, we do some comedy episodes, ton of modern game reviews. This past week, it was Expansion Pass 185. Uh, It was a very special episode for me because it was my Super Mario Brothers Wonder review, which was awesome because it was the first new Mario platformer that I've gotten to review since I started the show. And if you don't know, I'm a bit of a Mario fan so it was awesome and as is becoming tradition here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of expansion pass my super mario bros wonder review and here's the thing number one uh i've made this clear i'm not the world's biggest mario maker fan i was super pumped when that idea came out but i think most people suck at making mario levels me included so i was a little bit nervous that this was the death of my beloved 2d mario games because you're right in theory, Mario Maker provides us with endless games, and that Mario Maker could do anything we needed it to do. But I really think Nintendo... Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if it was Miyamoto or whom it was that came up with the whole concept of Mario Wonder, basically just being a Mario acid trip, uh, but they're, they're genius. Whoever it is is a fucking genius. It was so smart because it really did take... It basically took New Super Mario Brothers, which, again, I don't think is as bad as some people make them out to be. And just pumped it full of steroids. And to me, like, the the real secret sauce of Super Mario Bros. Wonder isn't that it's just another classic 2D Mario platformer. Because I'll be honest, like, the platforming in this game is good. But as far as just 
basic, straight up 2D Mario platforming, it's been done better. I, I, it, it's been done better. Uh, this one relies on a gimmick, and that gimmick is the Wonder Flowers, which we'll get more into. Fortunately, that gimmick works really, really well. So that's now available in our archives, and this week it's Expansion Pass 186, and we're right back on the review rails with Marvel's Spider-Man 2. For the PlayStation 5. I finished it over the weekend. I'm ready to talk about it. I will warn you, unlike just about every one of my modern game reviews, this one is going to be a full-blown spoiler cast. It's just the story, all the characters that show up. It's just such a massive part of the game. I don't think it's possible to do a, a long, spoiler-free review of it. I think the only other times we've done that were The Last of Us Part Two and God of War Ragnarok, which are available in the archives if you're interested. So then, this, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, it'll be my Spider-Man 2 spoiler cast. So again, subscriptions start at $3 a month to get new podcasts every week, instant access to over 500 ad-free archive bonus podcast, plus access to our Remember the Game Discord, the chance to vote in our Patreon polls every month, the ability to submit comments to be read on our shows, you can DM with me, and you even get a shout-out, and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to most of these people. A huge thank you to our newest Patriots, JRPG fan, Wasa Wasabi, Craggy Doodle, <laughs> Professor VJ Cornucopia's Food Magorium and Great American Steakery. I love that fucking... Shout out to anyone who gets that reference. That's a great pull. Stealth Bike, Triangle Island, Hella Maney, Airport Hobo, Brian Arkand, MBT Live 1979, Super Jess, Captain Steve N, Frank Qu Quistra, sorry Frank, Wizard of Gore, and Tyler Tomaszewski. Uh, I might have ruined that. Thank you all so much for the support and welcome to Remember the Game Industries, patreon.com slash remember the game. And don't forget, you can find me over on the old Twitch box, twitch.tv slash remember the game whenever you want to come by. And I'm on Cameo now, the cameo.com slash Adam Bank, Adam Blank. And they're dirt cheap. So uh, if you want me to yell at somebody, hook me up and I'll yell at them. That's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our patrons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment blowing in the cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. <laughs> Let's blow our first blower this week is my good buddy Brian, who said, Hey Adam, since we're all pretty much the first generation that got heavily into video games, do you think when we're all in old folks' homes we could bring back couch co-op and LAN parties? That would be the best. I have never thought of that before, my good buddy Brian. That is a fucking outstanding idea. I would love to think that, you know, I'm I'm 39. I would love to think in another like 40 years, uh, I'm sitting in a senior's home playing like overcooked on the couch with our WWF No Mercy on the couch with my friends. I don't know. I, I I think there's every chance by that point we're in like VR and we're just living like we're 20 forever in virtual reality, but I think that's a fucking outstanding idea. Like imagine the cords, <laughs> the cords running across the hall from one room to another in the seniors home because we're playing Halo 2 and we each have our own room so there's no screen watching or anything. That's fucking sick. I I like it. I like the way you think, Brian. That had a lot of likes this week as a comment and uh, I added one to it. Uh, that was a great fucking comment. It was well done. Uh, Brandon DeZeba. Said, so with Mario and Spider-Man 2 off your radar, are there any other games that have your attention until 2024? RoboCop and Star Ocean Second Story, Second Story R will be keeping me busy till the new year. And congrats on another successful donation stream, Adam. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm done Mario. I'm done Spider-Man. Mario RPG, which comes out next Friday, is the only other 2023 release that I'm like, there's like heels dug in. There's no way I'm not playing it. I am considering giving Persona 5 Tactica a shot when it drops in a few weeks because I like tactical games. Uh, other than that, I'm kind of going back and catching up on a couple I missed. The Callisto Protocol is on PS Plus, and haters going to hate. I've always wanted to play it. Now's the time. Probably going to fire that up this week. I'd still like to fire up Star Wars Jedi Survivor if I get the opportunity. And I'd really like to play Alan Wake 2, but I still have to play the original Alan Wake. So I have it installed. I got to get around to playing it. That'd probably make a fun episode of Remember the Game. Those are probably... If I had to put them in order, I'd probably go Callisto Protocol, Alan Wake, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. But I'm really interested in playing all three. But Mario RPG is the top priority. Other than that, it's old stuff for the podcast. What a fucking year for games. My God, my God. 
<laughs> someone's attractive cousin wrote, wrote in a shout out to make that reference and said uh hey uh, that's great because that's a reference not only to the simpsons but to saskatchewan uh <laughs> no i'm kidding i know we have like three listeners in saskatchewan much love uh marry whoever you want hey adam will the show still be the same when you hit puberty i fear without the voice cracks it just won't be the same well thank you i fucking hyped up your name and had some fun with it and then all you did was take a shot at my voice so i hope your cousin fucking dumps you uh, da- <laughs> nice comment. Daft Belgia said, Hey, Adam, just curious. Do you ever have issues with controllers that malfunction or stick drift from this generation? I'm talking the Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Because I have the feeling this generation is more reliable compared to the early Switch controllers, PS4, or Xbox One. Or am I just crazy? Oh, you're crazy, Daft. Uh, I am not at any... I mean, obviously the Switch. Listen, at this point, everybody knows the Switch is... Uh, the Switch Joy-Cons are wonk- wonkier than my eye. They drift all over the place. I have had to send in my drift joy con, my joy cons for drifting. I also have issues with the D pad in my Pro controller, which is why I bought my eight bit do, and that thing's fucking awesome. Um, I never had problems with my PS4, Xbox One controllers, and thus, thus far, I have not had problems with my PS5 or Series Everything controllers. The one thing I will say is I've seen a lot of reports of the uh, analog sticks on the Xbox controllers wearing down super quick i bought a set of like joy like basically just like thumb covers they're like uh stick covers that go on the top of the and like they've been great not only not only do i actually feel like they feel better than an un it's you wrap it up kids they feel better than the unprotected xbox analog controls uh the the sticks but also uh they're probably protecting them from wearing down but maybe i've just been lucky but so far i i genuinely think between the xbox series everything controller and the ps5 controller this might end up being the best generation of controllers ever definitely since the gamecube ps2 original xbox controllers uh i like the dreamcast but the controller why does the cord come out of the bottom i fucking hate that Uh, i think it's gonna go down as one of the best generations of controllers ever so far so good on my end so hopefully they're treating you well uh, Danny Gauthier said, yo, knowing your pussiness for scary games, I have to admit something. I may, I'm way more scared and horrified by war than by old mental asylums. War games have become so realistic, it scares the shit out of me. No way am I ever playing one of those, and without judging anyone, I don't understand why people are interested in realistic war games. It's delicate, I know, but what's your take? Why are so many people interested in them? I genuinely do not get it. Love, Danny. At least you signed it, love. Uh... I don't know, man. Honestly, I never thought of it until you fucking wrote in and said that and you got me scratching, scratching my noggin. I don't, I don't play Call of Duty. I don't play a lot of the war games. I'm not opposed to them. I just suck at them. So I don't, I don't play them. Uh, the idea of real life war scares the bejeebas out of me. I'm five, six with limited depth perception and no eye and, uh, or an, an asthma. Uh, I, oh, fuck me. I would, good God. And, and listen, like, I'm not trying to make jokes. I do cut why well, I am trying to make jokes, but I, I come from a military family. Uh, my dad served, my, my grandpa served, my uncles have served. Obviously, nothing but respect for the military. Wherever you are, uh, massive props to you and thank you for your service. But, uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, like, I, honestly, water scares me more than, like, I have always said that Outlast scares the shit out of me, and it does. But like any any game where I have to go into really deep water scares me because I have a phobia of like the ocean. I'll go swimming. I have no problem swimming in the ocean or in a deep end of a pool. But you know, like when you're like flying over the ocean and you look and you're like, that is limitless water. That scares the fucking shit out of me. Do you remember the original Final Fantasy VII where you have to go underwater in the sub and weapon is down there? That makes me very anxious. So I don't know. I is that. Is that any weirder than being scared of war? I, don't, I think it's just if you're scared of something, you're scared. Of, I'm never playing Subnautica. Fuck that. Uh, I get it. Yeah, we're all, I, I get it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being scared of war. I I don't know why people enjoy it so much. I guess is it just, it's kind of like, I don't know. Is it kind of like paintball in a way, I guess? Like for people to play the video games? It's just like an escape to, I don't know. I don't know. I've never been into them, so I I can't uh, I can't speak. If you've been into them, let me know why you so into why you like the why you like war games so much, huh? Curious. Thanks, Danny, for writing. In. Appreciate you. Greg M said, uh, "Hey Adam, another great week of amazing podcasts. Thank you. Love the twenty four hour stream. Thank you. I did a lot of lurking in there. I wanted to ask you about your thoughts on these glasses that are coming out that can overlay a screen over your vision, like the X Real Air glasses. Is this something you can see yourself using, or do you think it's just a fad that will eventually disappear and be forgotten about? Keep up the great podcasts. Go Leafs, go. I agree with literally everything you said until the last three words. 
Uh, the Maple Leafs are boo boo the Maple Leafs. That, that's all. I can't think of anything else. Um, I, I okay. So to answer your questions, do I see myself using these glasses where it basically puts the overlay right in front of your eyes? Uh, no, probably not. But there's but like a I only have one eye. Right, I don't really use VR either. I just, I get, I, I don't, it, I'm not interested. I, I get motion sick very easily. I'm really just not all that interested. Uh, as far as the glasses, though, I, I don't think it's a fad. I think that we're maybe a little ahead of where it's got to be, but I don't think it's a fad. I, I'm telling you right now, as some of you are gonna disagree with me, but I, some of you that are my age will remember this. I remember when the iPhone was first announced, and people were like. Pfft, I don't want my music and my phone in the same thing because if I lose it, I just lost my iPod and my phone. That's fucking stupid. And now, can you imagine life without a smartphone? I, I genuinely feel like stuff like these glasses where your screen is right in front of your eyes or I, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up with something that beams into your head. I said it like, what, five minutes ago we were talking about uh, when we're going to be old. I think we'll all just be living in VR extra lifestyle eventually. So I don't, I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's a fad, but I do think we have a ways to go before we're there. But we're going to get there. And fuck, people are already driving and texting and shit. Imagine what they're going to be doing when they can drive and watch porn on their glasses and you can't even fucking tell. Oh, God. That's it. Maybe that is actually, that is maybe the one way I would use those glasses. Not for driving, but the, the porn thing sounds kind of... <laughs> like that Simpsons... <laughs> like that Simpsons where Homer has the glasses with the fake eyes on him so he can sleep in court. Just, <laughs> just watching porn, but it looks like you're staring straight ahead. Man, he's really happy. Anyways, anyways. Uh, good question, Greg. And finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. Professor VJ Cornucopia's Food Megorium and Great American Steakery wrote in, great question, but also that handle just turns me on a bit. And says, uh, hey, Adam, long time writer, first time listener. As the... <laughs> As the list of games that you personally played continues to dwindle as the episodes pass, would you consider perhaps choosing a month to play games from consoles you're not familiar with, such as the Turbo Graphics, the Jaguar, or the infamous console named after a planet that shall not be named? Or would logistics make it too difficult? Just seems like it could be fun time of year for us hot dogs to look forward to while also helping you extend the content to review that you are more familiar with. Uh, you know what? I do get asked this sometimes. I'll be like the two consoles I get asked the most about that I have literally zero experience with are the Turbo Graphics 16 and of the, the Sega Saturn. Uh, there's also yeah, there is the Jaguar. I do get asked occasionally about like Atari games, ColecoVision. I did, I never really played a Sega Master System. I think we've covered one or two games from that that have been re released. Um, would I ever cover some of them? PSV, PSP. Dude, I've never played anything. I've never held a PSP. Uh, I wouldn't say no. The, the Saturn, I would say probably no. I don't want all you Saturnians cream in your pants. Maybe just relax. I'm probably, like, I, I don't know. Okay, if I'm if I'm being dead on it, I'm in a good mood today. So I'm just putting all my cards on the table. I would really like to fire up a Turbo Graphics at some point and see what it's all about. I can't say anything about the Jaguar because those games are pretty not that easily or readily available these days. And before you write in about emulation, that's a little too complicated for me. Um... Uh, the Sega Saturn, had it not become the meme in this community that it's become, I would have been more than open to trying out a Sega Saturn game. Now it's just kind of become a joke where I just tease the Saturnians. But honestly, there's a chance that maybe someday I review a Saturn game, just for the laughs. Maybe someday I would. I'd really like to go back and try some Atari ColecoVision stuff maybe at some point. I don't know how well one of those small games would hold up on an episode of the show, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. So to answer your question, Professor, I'm not going to say the whole name again. Uh, yes, there is absolutely a chance that I would I would look at. Uh, I don't know if I would choose like a month to dedicate to them, but I, I'm not opposed to sneaking one in on occasion when uh, if the if the if the fancy tickles my pickle, as the kids say these days. So thank you for writing in, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, for writing in. We got to keep the show moving. Let's switch things up and get into uh, an, an alternate version of our smash hit segment it is watch one remake one erase one and 
And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our listeners three retro video game cartoon shows. They can watch one as it was released. They can remake one as a modern cartoon. And the third is a race from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get there in just a minute. This week we're talking old school gaming cartoons, right? So why not? I've got The Legend of Zelda, Mega Man, and Captain N. And 58% said, watch Mega Man remake Zelda and erase Captain N. That seems like blasphemy to me. I can't believe it was that big of Runaway. No other answer got more than 10%. 58%. Watch Mega Man remake Zelda, erase Captain N, the Game Master. For shame. Let's see what a few of you had to say here. Then I'll tell you what the right answer is. And it was not that. Fuck. Troy Evers said, watch Mega Man because I haven't seen it. Remake Captain N because some of the smaller Nintendo IPs could be a blast to see redone. Erase Zelda because we need to completely scrap it and do something better. I don't disagree with anything you just said there. It's not the order I would go with, but I don't disagree with any of that. That Zelda cartoon is an abomination and any of you jonesing for it need to fucking go have a cold shower or something. My God. Oh, God, that show sucks. Excuse me. Got a hiccup there. Wildcard said, okay, I haven't watched any of these, but here we go. Watch The Legend of Zelda because of the stupid excuse me gimmick. Wildcard, you are better off having never watched that. Just, just ignorance is bliss, my friend. Remake Captain N because I feel we could use a better mod around here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And erase Mega Man because we got to erase something and I really want to try to fix our beloved Captain N. Sound logic. Minus wanting to watch Zelda for the excuse me thing. Fuck no. Phoenix Wrong said, I'm nostalgic for Mega Man, so I will watch that fondly. I'll erase Captain N because I missed that train, so let it sail off and disappear. Remake Zelda because I think a Legend of Zelda anime would be sick. Spelled S-I-C, which is what I assume the kids do these days. Or maybe it was a typo. I don't know. Uh, it sound logic. I get it. And Aeroslonic said, oh, fuck. Said, excuse me, Adam Blank. Toughy, but good memories. I'll watch Captain N. It was a bit weird with Mother Brain and some of the other characters, but the nostalgia runs deep. I'll remake Zelda with today's animation and the history of all the games. You'd have one hell of a show and a ridiculously hot Zelda 2. And erase Mega Man. I didn't watch this as much, probably because we were poor and had one shitty TV with VHF, UHF on it, and parents needed to watch their shitty shows. You know, I don't blame you for not watching Mega Man. I remember when I was a kid, it was on at like 6 a.m. I had to get up early to watch it. And if my parents caught me, they'd give me shit because we weren't supposed to get up before 7. Uh, so no no hate to any of you that didn't watch Mega Man back in the day. I'm actually going with 10% of you, the runner-up, uh, including Andrew Pritchett, who said this is a savage one. Captain N is a beautiful mess, and it inspired a friend of mine to make his own NES controller belt buckle at college, which was beyond cool. I love the Mega Man cartoon as a kid, but I've heard it didn't age well, so let's remake it to give Mega Man his due. And excuse me, Link, but you're out. Rules are rules. Rules are rules, and in this case, the rules help, because Link needs to go. I'm jumping right to my erase. I'm erasing The Legend of Zelda, because A, I'd prefer a live-action show, and B, they burn that bridge forever with excuse me. I fucking... Every time I came home to watch Mario and Zelda was on instead, I got so fucking mad, and I watched it, but I didn't fucking like it. Mom would come in, and I'd be crying while I was watching cartoons. It's that stupid fucking elf with his stupid fucking excuse me, and... Ugh. Bradley and I get into it a little more. God, I hate it. So I'm erasing The Legend of Zelda cartoon forever. As far as the watch and remake, I'm going to watch Captain N because I didn't watch it too often as a kid and I thought it was awesome whenever I did see it. So I'd like to watch it again. Mega Man, I have watched the whole series. I'm going to remake it because it wasn't very good and you could make a great Mega Man cartoon. Mega Man should be bigger than Pokemon. So we're remaking the Mega Man cartoon and we are putting fucking Jeff Bezos money behind it and yada, yada, yada. Mega Man is now our Lord and Savior. Thank you, everybody that wrote in to play along as always. Uh, let's pause here. We'll get a quick word in from our sponsor. Then I'll say what I've been playing and we'll get into the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. We will be right back. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. 
You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships. And talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home. And they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Okay, what have I been playing? Outside of everything I was playing for the 24-hour stream, uh, I've been playing Spider-Man 2. I finished it Sunday. Uh, I've actually just been dinking around with it since I beat it on Sunday and just doing some of the like post-game stuff, the collectibles and things like that. Really looking forward to reviewing that tomorrow. I've been playing Burnout Revenge. Um, the goal is to make that next week's episode. I hope that lines up. I got to get all the recording uh, scheduling setup, but if it does, that'll be next week's show. And don't worry if you're like a Burnout Revenge fan. You're like, oh, I hope he doesn't hate it. I fucking that game's awesome. Game's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to reviewing it. And I've been playing Sonic Superstars. Uh, I forgot to mention that when Brandon asked, "What have I been playing?" Now that Mario and Zelda are done, or Mario and Spider Man, excuse me, I picked up Sonic Superstars to play on the 24 hour stream. I'll probably review it on Expansion Pass in the next week or two. It's not, uh, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not. It's better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's better than I anticipated. I'll probably stream it on Twitch a little bit more this week if you want to come by and uh, and check that out. Anyways, that's it. That's what I've been playing. Let's talk Super Mario Brothers Super Show. That's why you're here. As always, I like to let you nerds sound off before my guest and I hog the microphone. A lot of comments this week, so let's start ripping through them. The Beast Legend Gaming said, For the few episodes I have watched as a kid, I absolutely love the theme music for it. I would even dance to it sometimes. Now, I would do the same, Beast Legend Gaming, that take one step. Like, come on, come on, but it's time to go do the Mario. I used to go with that too. But Faded Sufferance wrote in and just blew my fucking mind. Listen to this. Faded Sufferance says, I watched this constantly after school growing up. As an adult, though, I now realize that when you do the Mario, you're just power walking. You, you're right, because he says, swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. Take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. So you are literally just swinging your arms from side to side and taking steps, which is just power walking. You just boggle my, what? You've ruined do the Mario for me. Son of a bitch. Matt Babineau said, I can't wait. I remember rushing. There's my lunch, my voice crack. I remember rushing home for lunch break at elementary school just to try to catch the next episode on YTV. Though the Link episodes were all right, everyone knows the main attraction were the Mario episodes. The theme was so iconic, they included it in the new movie. That made me pop too. Captain Lou Albano will always be Mario to me. Agreed. On basically everything you just said. Minus that Link was all right. Link sucked. Michael Mathis said, I loved the show so much growing up. I always liked it when we got a Legend of Zelda episode mixed in. Double secret probation. And Adam's backwards cap said, did you ever see the clip where it seems like Mario is saying, fuck you, Luigi, when Luigi points out, points out spaghetti on Mario's overalls? I think the clip was called Neatness Counts, and it always got me and my buddies from college cracking up. I looked this up after you mentioned it. I have seen this before. I, I, I think he's saying thank you, Luigi, but right as Luigi takes the spaghetti off Mario's shirt, the, like, in-studio in audience, whatever... Uh, starts clapping and cheering and laughing, and it really does sound like Mario's like "fuck you, Luigi." It's all look it up. Just look up "fuck you, Luigi." It's on YouTube. It'll pop up right away. Fucking hilarious. Uh, that's good enough. Let's talk. It. Thank you, everybody that wrote in. Uh, I'm excited about this. I know you are excited about this. Let's talk the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I'm gonna queue up some more of that awesome music, and when it, I'm gonna talk. Okay, okay, wait. Stop. Stop. Stop the music. I'm just going to do this segment, then we're going to play the music so you can hear the whole thing and I'm not talking over, all right? Bradley and I are going to talk about the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which originally released on television on September 4th, 1989. Enjoy the podcast and enjoy the music. Here we go. Hey, yo, yo, it's the Mario Brothers, and the game, the warps, so we're working on the dream. And the princess a hand in the mushroom land, so the action with the puppets, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Can't help but be the brothers. Uh. 
All right. So this is uh, this is gonna be a very. I hate to use. The, I hate because people use this for like Christmas episodes and stuff. But a very special episode of Remember the Game because we just wrapped up the 24 hour extra live stream this weekend. I know you're all sick of hearing about it. I'm sorry, but I haven't had any time to prep an episode this week. I'm fucking tired. And then I thought to myself, Hey, what's something I could just talk about? For 40 minutes without really need to do any homework at all and the first thing that came to mind was the stupid super mario brothers super show because it's excellent and joining me via the blank phone this week to talk about said stupid show is uh is the luigi of remember the game and that is my pal bradley McHugh. what's going on man how are you am i the luigi of the McHugh brothers well you're the younger one is luigi younger i thought he was older for some reason or is he just taller yeah he's just taller but he's his cowardly younger brother yeah Oh, okay. Sorry, I've already I've already de- discredited myself <laughs> right on the podcast. How are you doing, Adam? How's it going, bud? I, I'm doing good, man. I'm excited about this episode. This is gonna be. I'm fucking. It's just like every week we talk about a video game, right? And I'm trying to remember all the details of the game and the shit that people's gonna want to hear about and stuff like that. And this week it's like, now we're just gonna talk about this stupid cartoon show that I just I didn't even realize this. I was so I was watching this last night. Um, a listener sent me the dvds and my god i'm so sorry i'm gonna make sure if i've got it i'm gonna write down who's who sent them to me and thank you in the intro we're doing this part first so i hopefully i remembered your name for the intro i'm so sorry i i'm an idiot <laughs> but I, I was re-watching this and i'm like dude this sucks just like most of the cartoons that we watched as kids suck now but like i don't think this one sucks as much as some shows that we watched as kids suck now this was fun this is a fun well, i don't know i don't know i don't know about that Oh, buddy, uh-huh. have you watched? <laughs> like, okay, so let's just because this is gonna be a pretty chill episode. We're just talking old cartoons. Let me just ask you, like, the two cartoons I watched the most as a child were Ninja Turtles and the Real Ghostbusters. Real mm-hmm. Ghostbusters holds up. That that it's a fucking good cartoon. Ninja Turtles, I love those guys. I love those guys, but that Whoa. show is. <sighs> Yo, be very careful, my guy. What it's you, pretty what are bad, you buddy. Oh, are you oh, out here? T- no, O three, twelve, and seventeen are all phenomenal. The the original eighty seven cartoon is a little loose around the edges today. No, no way, no yeah. way, yeah. no. I, I, Raps, I don't Raps know. a pussy. Half the time they're colored the wrong color. The voices are wrong sometimes. It's. I just... will admit that every episode is the same, but I don't know that, that, yes. that that's cartoons. I don't know. I I don't think I can get on. I think Ninja Turtles holds so up. So wait, I wait, Ninja... wait. So you think 87 Ninja Turtles has aged well, but this show hasn't? That is that is what I am saying. Yes, my that is correct. God, <laughs> this is the biggest controversy and remember the game. History. So no, let wait, me ask then, you then: what what cartoons did you watch as a kid, and do they hold up if you've rewatched them? Okay, so when I was a kid, um, I used to watch Fox Box, and the shows that I watched that were on is I watched the O3 Ninja Turtles, and I agree, it holds up. It's really good. Um, and I watched Kirby right back at ya. I wa- did anybody else watch Kirby right Kir- back at you? Or am, am I completely Kir- dead alone on Kirby had a cartoon show? Yeah, dude. It was called Kirby right you're, back at you. You're younger than me though. Like if you were like, oh, I grew up watching the O3 turtles. I was like, I was 20 when the O3 turtles started. So- yeah, yeah. I was, a, I was a kid. I was really little. I was like eight or nine when I watched Kirby- that. I watched that. Oh I mean, shit, Kirby, Kirby right back at you. I'll be damned. All right. Kirby Kirby right back at you. That show actually does hold up. I will tell you. That show actually does hold up. It shreds. Um I really liked that one. And then I had like um old VHSs that had like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Sure. Uh we watched we watched a lot of old cartoons on like Oh boy. I hope the cops don't come for me for this one, but like on LimeWire, we watched like a lot of like <laughs> the Mario Brothers show and like the Legend of Zelda cartoon which I've seen every episode of and that that there, one probably aged the worst. That's the, the one that aged the worst. The which one, sorry? The Zelda cartoon. That oh, one buddy. aged worst. I'm so glad that okay, we're all, okay. Two things. One, uh that warms my heart cuz I use LimeWire for music and porn. So that is the uh, that is the age. Wait, currently difference there. you currently use LimeWire for that? No, no, back then. Now I can't oh, okay. remember. Okay. Yeah, no, back back <laughs> in its era. Back in its LimeWire ruined more computers than anything in the history of the universe. I didn't and even I know you it. could still get LimeWire. I don't know if you can. You probably can. I don't think. I don't think you can. Oh, uh, number two. I'm glad, and I promise everybody, we're getting to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but uh, that's a great segue <laughs> into it. Uh, I agree. I know some people love the Zelda cartoon. I. I got to tell you, dude, as a child, whenever I would sit down to watch this, because it was never advertised as the Super Mario Brothers Super Show 
am the legend of Zelda. It was always just both. And every once in a while you would turn it on and it would be a Zelda episode instead of the worst the super Mario brothers super show. And the Zelda episodes always broke my heart. Cause it fucking, that show sucked. Dude, fucking sucked. It, I don't even think kids then liked it. Like no. it's so bad. If you've oh, never man. seen it and you're listening to this, I implore you just look up the original legend of Zelda cartoon link uh, is not a silent protagonist, but he might, you know what? That cartoon might be the reason Link has remained silent moving yeah, forward. The, because like we can't have him saying, excuse me, princess, no oh more. People hate it. <laughs> Shaylee, like Shaylee is a big fan. Like the only game she plays are Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. And so I was showing her clips of the old Zelda cartoon and she was like, oh my God, I fucking hate him. Then it, excuse <laughs> me, princess. And I was like, I hope that Ganon kills you and wins. Oh this, my this weekend, God. This weekend, I was watching the Mario Brothers Super Show, and they always have the promo for Zelda at the end, which I watch the full promo every time. Yeah, um, me too. and they have the they have the promo for the Zelda show, and at the end, he go, she goes, "Well, thanks, hero," and he goes, "Well, excuse oh. me, princess." And my wife is watching anime on her laptop, and she looks up, she takes her headphones out, and she goes, "What the hell is this? What are you <laughs> watching?" <laughs> It was so bad, man. Oh my god. It was just and I and I will say that like it that warms my heart a bit to hear that because I know that you're a bigger like I like Zelda. Like I like the games. I know you're a bigger Zelda fan than I am. And I always Huge. wondered if like if I didn't like Zelda the cartoon because I was just a Mario kid or if I just thought it sucked. And it's nice to hear a Zelda fan be like, "No, it kind of sucks." No, that makes me it feel stinks. better. It's the only bad, thing I liked dude. about it was uh the sound effect his sword would make when he would shoot the laser beams out of it. I, I always enjoyed that, that sound effect. <laughs> but that wasn't worth watching it for. Um, and we didn't first, get live first action. First appearance in Navi. Oh, God. Oh, right, because that little fairy <laughs> followed you around. Is that? I don't, I, oh my I don't think her name's actually Navi, but like it is like the first like uh, visualization of that concept of the fairy being a, con- <laughs> like a, a, a companion. It's so funny, eh? Because, like, listen, both cartoons, Mario Brothers and Zelda, were clearly both, you know, they were aimed toward children, right? This was in the, I'm, man, I'm telling you, if, you, if y'all weren't around back in the era when this, so this show ran in 1989, and then obviously it was reruns for a long time. But I if you weren't around. around back then, Nintendo was like religion. It was just everywhere. Everything you could put a Mario or a Zelda or Link or whatever, or Luigi, whomever. If you could put a Mario character on something and sell it, they were doing it. And it was on everything back then. And it had to Man. appeal to, to kids. And, it's, and, I, and I will say that for better and worse, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show appealed to kids. Zelda, I don't really I, know who the target demographic for that show was. Certainly wasn't like, Zelda fans. No, it's like you took this serious franchise and tried to make it funny. Like Mario's never been serious. You know, Zelda I, uh, was, yeah. and it just didn't when, work at all. When I was doing research for this show, I found out that there was a third companion show that they stapled to these other two shows with some, like, ma- uh, like original character. What was it called? Captain N? Oh, that my was, God. like, you a didn't... third piece? <laughs> I never I never heard of this. I never heard of this till today. God, you're such a youngin. Oh, my God. There's <laughs> listeners right now that are my age that are like, he doesn't know Captain N. Captain N, the Game Master. And he had a zapper, and he'd fight, like, yeah. King Hippo. And, oh, man, yeah, but Captain those, N was good shit. Captain N was But those same shit. people, those same people who were like, this guy doesn't know Captain N have been Googling Kirby right back at you. 100%. 100 billion percent. Billion yeah, percent yeah, yeah. 100 billion percent. <laughs> Oh, man. Captain N. I want to do a whole episode about Captain N at some point. I love that show. It wasn't <laughs> as good yeah. as this show, though. What I Okay, so now that we've wasted 10 minutes talking about just... I love... I fucking love this podcast. Super Mario <laughs> Brothers Super Show. This thing, like, y'all have heard two of the songs now because I've played them off the top. And uh, this show traditionally would start off with the, the real-life Mario and Luigi, which, uh, by the way, they've both passed away now, but shout out to Danny Wells, who was Luigi, and uh, near and dear to my heart, because I'm a wrestling fan, Captain Lou Albano, who played Mario. And I gotta say, man, I, like, it was about, it was like, they'd start off with a live action series of Mario and Luigi in their weird fucking basement Oh, the, their plumbing, their shop. plumbing business? <laughs> yeah, their plumbing business. Uh, I, I, 
I laughed what? so hard in the first episode when the woman was like, my sink is broken, and she brings her sink to their house. Like, that's how plumbing works. <laughs> and they used to, like... <laughs> and they used to have, like, just random, like... C, D, C and D tier celebrities would just pop yeah. by and just be the first walking. Episode has, <laughs> the first episode is Nicole Eggert from Baywatch and Luigi's like, we watch your show all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> and it was just the two of them in this stupid, it looked like, it almost looked like an Italian restaurant in a basement with a shop off to the side. It was so yeah. dumb. <laughs> uh, but it would always start off with them then we'd get the cartoon in the middle, and then it would come back to them to kind of wrap up their. It was almost like two shows in one, and and I have to say that like, listen, neither one was was great, the live action or the cartoon. Neither one was great, but I got enjoyment out of both of them, both as a child and watching them now. And the cartoon, the cartoon's better, but we'll get to the cartoon in a minute. I have to say, the live action, I actually think Wells and Albano as Mario and Luigi were was like surprisingly not horrible. It works, I think. I think it. I think it totally works. <laughs> like, I don't think they're any worse than the guys that were, uh, and their names are just suddenly escaping me. And I know both their names uh, in the live action movie in the '90s. Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, baby. Yes, both <laughs> names are like right there on the tip of my tongue. For some reason, I was thinking Bob Leguizano, and I'm like, no, I know it though. It's, I'm tired. <laughs> Um, they were, they like, I don't think these castings were that much worse. Like, obviously they took Mario and Luigi and made them a lot more childish in this show, but I actually thought like the voices worked. They do kind of look like them. Like it was, it was not terrible. I don't know. I like the live well, action also part. You also got to remember, like, when they were making this show, like, what they really had to run with. It's not the plethora of Mario content we have available to us now. It was one, eight or two, eight bit video games that like can't see shit you don't know what these people actually look like totally yeah yeah if you don't know this show came out after mario 2 but before Mar mario 3 got its own cartoon yeah and i, I want to a little bit and i, I want to touch on that one a little bit later I, yeah I, I don't know if you want to do an uh, yeah but like no no that one no, i think is all also really interesting because they're um, all the same as for because i think it's the same voice actors for super mario brothers 3 as well like it's pretty much the same show same structure um, but the original, it's so obvious that the original is trying to sell Super Mario Brothers 2 pretty much from the get-go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like the, like the first episode is about Birdo. Yeah, totally. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Like, to like, yeah, to kind of shift away from like, cause I, I really don't have much else to add to the live action. Like it was fun. It was cool seeing Mario and Luigi like in real life, but it felt like. Uh, okay, I want to word this very carefully because I know some people listen with their kids. Remember when you were a kid and you and you met Santa at the mall and that was like a really big thing, but then you'd see him on TV and he just looked cooler? I feel yeah. like Mario and Luigi in real life were like, like seeing them in real life was like the mall Santa and then seeing them <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like they're all like it's actually it's you know it really is Mario and Luigi. Like it really is it's, Santa. It is it is clearly guys in a, a costume though. I, I do get what you're saying. <laughs> yes, it just isn't quite the it's not quite the same. But I, as a little kid, like I was watching this in eighty nine ninety, so I'm like seven eight years old. Uh, it it I didn't really particularly even care what they were doing in the live action thing. I didn't know who most of the people that were coming into their shop and stuff were. I was just excited to see my, my, these two guys that were like heroes of mine as a kid in real life. I didn't even, they could have just been sitting around eating spaghetti and I wouldn't have cared. And that is um, pretty much what they do. If I'm being honest, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, but, but my question for you is who like, who is the live action thing for like were there a lot of kids watching this that knew who the girl from baywatch was like that knew who these you know what i mean like who like was this supposed to be that's like a, a kid saturday night live or something that's like, actually what a, this? Uh, you know what you know what that's actually probably a good way to describe it because it's just sort of like an intro they bring on one celebrity and then they kind of introduce the cartoon and then they they do an extra i do love that there's always like some mild conflict um oh. Oh, and going back to just like the fucking the the girl the Baywatch girl, it was I thought it was so 
funny and like not even in like a, oh that's so stupid it's funny but like in a genuine like I thought the writers were being funny that she came in via their bathroom cabinet because yeah. a bunch of the stuff was expired yeah. and then they're like well, they're like come on in and then she just appears in the house if you haven't seen it yeah but that's where they first find her is in their medicine cabinet going through their expired medication <laughs> what the fuck and like, and I like, ask you, like, <laughs> the only thing I can, the, honestly, only reason I can think of why you would do both the live action and the cartoon instead of just the cartoon, which is clearly what most kids were really into. Um, the only thing I can really think of is that, especially back then, like, animation was not cheap. And no. maybe they were like, well, this will eat up a third of the show. Just these two guys in horrible, like, Spirit of Halloween costumes talking to random celebrities in new york i don't know like i i don't i don't i true. never and i don't understand what it's there for like i'm like is it for the parents that have to watch I, it with think, their kids i think you hit it right on the nose when you said animation isn't cheap because like you're right they only have to do like 14 minutes of animation per episode and it looks cheap Oh, the animation! Boy. Yeah, yeah. The anim- it's okay, like so- there's there's a lot of corners being cut here. <laughs> oh, it's it's fucking bad. I think we're done with the live action. I don't really have much else to say. Oh, just sorry. Before we wrap up on the live action, uh, shout out to Captain Lou singing "Do the Mario." Ah, like I would I would sing along to that every single time I watch the show. At the end, where it's just him like dancing in front of like the worst green screen ever, <laughs> <laughs> like swing. You can see the green screen. outline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then the best part is if you watch the the original theme song, where it is Mario and Luigi, and it points. It's like them against the backdrop of the cartoon versions of them. There's a part where the cartoon Mario Luigi uh, Princess Toadstool, as she was back then, and Toad are on the magic carpet flying over the desert and the real act, the real live Mario and Luigi run along the bottom and underneath them. And as they reach the end of the screen, they both just kind of stop running and just look back at the camera. Like it's so <laughs> obvious. So like, it, it, like look up the video. Like they, they didn't even like, they didn't like, they were like, Hey, run off the camera and then cut. They were like, all right, you're out of real estate. Just stop. That's fine. And they left it in. Like Luigi stops running and just kind of looks at the camera. Like he's half a second from taking a pack of smokes out of his coveralls. <laughs> and lighting one up on the, and it's just, I love, I fucking love how hokey it is. And I genuinely think Lou in particular does a good job as Mario. Like, I love that voice he uses. I genuinely okay, so enjoy him as Mario. I also think I, I, I don't know if, if this is correct, but if it is correct, I learned it today. Does Lou Albano also voice Mario in the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, both Mar- both him and Danny oh. Wells, like they voiced them in the cartoon. So I think what they were trying to, I think what the show was going for was that, like. This was them before they got sucked down the bathtub. And then when they would show the cartoon part, they would always show that second song with the rap, like, we're the Mario Brothers and Plumbing's a game. And they get sucked down the the bathtub. I think that's supposed to be the real life versions of them sucked into the bathtub, which is why it's the same voice in the cartoon world, which is pretty rad, actually. I love, I, I, I know you just kind of mentioned it briefly, but I do want to go in. I love the Mario Brothers rap. I think it is Me so too. good. I yeah, think it dude. is. It's when it when it made an appearance in the Mario Brothers movie, I fucking popped. Uh, dude, like I was, I, I was going love bananas. That song. I yeah. love that fucking song. That song's in this episode somewhere. I don't know if I've already played it or if I'm gonna play it. I probably already played it. I used to sing along with that too when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I, I knew I knew the whole thing when I was little. Me too. Yeah, it's it's a good fucking theme song. It's up there with like Ninja Turtles and like some of the best theme songs of the eighties. It's fucking awesome. Do you know um, the whole thing now, or or did you just oh know it as a kid? Uh, I can hear it in You're my a- head, like if yo yo, we're the Mario Brothers, and plumbing's our game. Found the secret warp zone. We're working on the drain. Give the princess a hand in the mushroom land. We faster than the others. You'll be hooked on the brothers. I think that's how Hell it started. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's how it started. Oh my god! And then it's like, and then they show off like King Koopa because it's King Koopa. Evil Koopa and his Chupas are up to misbehave. And I fucking love that whole song. And like, then they show up and they're in the cartoon world with Princess Toadstool and Toad. And like, we see the classic villains, which is all the shit we're going to get into now and the power ups and the sound effects and King Koopa yeah. and everything. And it's like the live action was fine, but the live action was like the appetizer before the steak comes. And the cartoon was the fucking steak. And it was just, and you know what? it was such a horribly written and drawn animated whatever the term is cartoon but it was clearly just for fan service and it fucking worked it fucking worked so well 
I agree. I think that if you watch this and you're like, I don't like Mario, and then it's like, what are you watching it for then? Mm-hmm. Why even like? And if you watch and if you play Mario, you watch this and be like, well, isn't that clever? Isn't that fun it, to see? You totally. Know? Yeah. If you're not a Mario fan, this show brings nothing nothing to the table at all but if you are <laughs> if you are a mario fan and, and you mentioned it every episode you tune in it's exciting to just see like what what villain because again this is pre-mario 3 so we don't have we don't have the the raccoon tail uh the tanuki suit we don't, we don't have the hammer we suit, don't have the, the koopa suit. kids the koopa kids aren't there yet they show up yeah. in the later ones but in this one it was basically bowser looking like wart and yeah a bunch of, i want like he looks so much like Wart, but it was bad. I wanted to I wanted to ask about that because this show does do something that I think is really weird is that all of the bad guys and like the villains are like, you know, like Mauser and uh the Sniffy Guy and Fry Guy. They're all from Super Mario Brothers 2 and then Wart is nowhere to be found and Koopa's the main villain. I wonder why with because you got to remember, this is this is what I've been thinking about all 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 weekend. Is that you got to remember there were two Mario video games in existence at the time. One had Bowser and one had Wart. But the one they were trying to sell was the one that had Wart. So why yeah. is Bowser the main main villain of the TV show? Because Wart 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 gets done dirty all the time. Wart has gotten uh, no love at all, and it's ridiculous. Wart's a good fucking villain. I, I want to like, hear. Wart. I want. Here's what I want. I want a Wart game where. You you play as Wart and you become so obsessed with becoming like uh, like Mario that you are Wario by the end of the game. Oh Jesus! You're it's deep. canon. Wart Wart is Wario. You're getting deep. Imagine <laughs> like I, I thought this before. Like imagine if like listen, I'm I'm super stoked for Mario RPG remake. I can't wait for that game. I love Mario RPG. But imagine if Smithy the giant sword was actually like a, a disciple of Wart. And it was Wart coming I, back for revenge. And you had to team up with I, Bowser to take Wart down? That'd be fucking sick. I would sick. love that. That would be, be incredible. So but fuck Wart, I guess. He doesn't uh, I'm excited for that remake, too. But I just played the original. So I don't know if I'll get it right away. Oh, day one. I, can't, I, I know that whole game like the back of my hand. And I don't even fucking care. Just to see Gino in the new art. Uh, Gino's my boy. I love that. I love that puppet. My favorite puppet of all time. I, I almost I almost never use Gino if I'm being honest. I'm I such don't a either. purist. I, I only ever use Mario, Peach, and Bowser because I'm me like too. these are the ones I know. Yeah, me too. But Gino is still awesome. Gino's um, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I okay. love Gino. But I can't believe like I thought this was gonna be a 20 minute episode. We're at 22 minutes. Yeah. We barely <laughs> talked about the cartoon part. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pause for a break. We'll get the break in now, and then when we get back, we're gonna dive into the cartoon and all the different characters and stuff that appear because the cartoon is oh my god, I love it. We'll be right. We'll be right back. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. Okay, so you mentioned it a few minutes ago when we were talking about the cartoon. Um, it really, it's so weird that it's Bowser, but it's Bowser in charge of Mario 2 villains. He's got the shy guys. He's got the, the, the he's got fry guy. He's got mouse. Mouser's the best. Mouser's like his right hand lackey. He's, yeah, he's, he's like a, he's like a uh, mustache twirling villain in this one. Yeah, with like the over the I'll get back. you. Yeah, <laughs> he'll get you. He's so evil. He's he like, like in that very first episode, uh, or one of the first episodes, the one of the ones I watched last night. He's got the the red snakes that spit fire, uh, that, yeah, yeah. Like, and they're like his guns that he's holding, and he's like just holds them and shoots them as guns, like they're just like inanimate objects, even though they're actually living creatures. Uh, you have like those fucking red birds that drop the bombs, like you said. Birdo is there. It's so, and it's like I'm all for introducing the Mario two villains. I like the Mario two villains, but it's like there's no. I don't remember seeing Goombas. I saw I saw Goombas in like some later episodes that I watched, but like they're that, not in it very much. It's like no. mostly Mario Two stuff, and that bothers. Like I'm good with the like I I I think they kind of do the Koopa Troopas dirty. They they just the way they're drawn, they look kind of stupid, but at least they're there because Koopa Troopas and Goombas to me are the staples of Bowser's army. Like those are the two. Like those are the 
those are the, the like the one A and one B of, of Bowser's army are the Goombas and the Koopa Troopas. And it bothers me. Like those fucking little white uh like snow guys from Mario 2 that yeah, just have like yeah. the black guys. Like they they look like Goombas covered in snow. Like they're there, but the Goombas aren't. And that well, always news- as a kid, it always bothered me. The good news is, is that Goombas got their redemption in the 93 movie, you know, in that one. <laughs> oh, a lot. Jesus. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I should end this episode right now. Yeah. <laughs> but am I am cool, I banned? Though. Yeah, you're banned. Yeah, you're banned. Yeah. Um, but it was always cool to see, like, that was always my favorite thing. It was like I used to watch the Mega Man cartoon and it sucked, but I would tune it in because I wanted to see which robot masters would show up. Well, and there was favorite... a Mega Man cartoon. Oh, yeah. It was not oh. great, but it was it was there. And like, uh, and a lot of Mega I've Man. I've never Matt, seen like, that. He, that's that show. That cartoon is the reason Cutman is my favorite robot master of all time. Because Cutman is like Doctor Wily's like kind of ace, and he's like, ah yes, Mega Man. That's and he's just so <laughs> stupid all the yeah. time. Yeah, I love the, I love it, and that's what I love about this cartoon was seeing like again, Mouser was always awesome. Fry Guy, I'm a big fan. I think Fry Guy is the coolest of the Mega Man or the Mega, the part of me of the Mario Two like bosses. Fry, the flying fireball with sunglasses that's a pretty awesome boss like that's a cool so, fucking enemy so there was um there was three cartoons and i think of the three cartoons i think the super mario brothers super show is the best one um in my opinion although i really like the mario world one which we'll talk about in a bit but yeah. the reason i like the super mario brothers super show so much is that they pulled the mario party 2 thing where every episode has a theme and all the characters like dress to theme. There's like a pirate one and there's like, <laughs> yeah. there's what is it? B- Butch Mario and the Luigi kid where they're all yeah. wearing like cowboy hats. They were so stupid. And then like every cartoon would kick off with Mario being like plumber's log. So, and so date. And he'd be like, here's yeah. what's going on with us now. Here's where we are. And then they would always, yeah, just being like, and it would just be some random, like there'd be no context. It would just be that, like, oh, yeah, no, no, this week we're, like you said, we're in the wild, wild west, and we're wearing cowboy hats. Why wouldn't hats. we be? Yeah. Why wouldn't we be? <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't we be? And then Bowser, or King Koopa, I don't think they ever or call Koopa him the- Bowser. They always just call him King hey, Koopa. In that episode, I think they call him Koopa the Kid, which is very funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he always just shows up, and he's like, ah, I'm going to get those plumbers, like him and his, like, his, he always, that was his, like, only obsession was this is his, He doesn't and, like, even seem to have a goal. <laughs> no, he doesn't, he has no goal at all. It was like watching that very first episode you mentioned where, with Birdo. So in the very first episode, this, like, giant Birdo shows up and kidnaps Toad because it doesn't see well, and it thinks Toad is its missing child, its missing baby. So it's got Toad. So then Mario, Luigi, and, and Princess Toadstool set off to rescue Toad. And Bowser finds out they're there, and he's like, we got to get them. And it's like, they're not doing anything to you. They're just going to get Toad. Just leave them the fuck alone. And I also love to- yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So I also love that, like, in that episode with Birdo, is it's like, it feels like they didn't fact check anything. They just read the manual and was like, Birdo. Yeah, it sounds like a bird. Make it a bird. It's a bird. Yeah, because Birdo never flew. It was an egg spitting dragon. <laughs> yeah. And in the cartoon, it's like a bird. And I'm like, okay, you guys, like one phone call to the developers to be like, is this thing a bird? And they'll be yeah. like, no. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, man. And then like, we should we should really just, the voices, like Mario and Luigi are the actors from the live action. And I actually think it works. I love that Luigi, I feel like this, I mean, maybe it was teased prior to this. I don't remember from the manuals, but keeping in mind, this is after Mario brothers two. Um, I, I feel like this is the first time we really start to see Luigi as like the cowardly Luigi that we've come to know and love because in every, agree, yeah. every episode he's terrified every episode. Yeah. And, and Mario's the brave older brother is always telling him like, let's go, you know, um, and he's always like, can't we just stay home and have some spaghetti? Yeah, he's so <laughs> over the top cliche. Every episode, he's like, oh, I can't. They're like, they're literally like in like a jail cell held over lava, getting ready to be like murdered. And and he's like, oh, what I wouldn't give for a large pepperoni pizza right now. It's like, <laughs> so Man, the, the amount of times they mention Italian food is is a sin, in my opinion. It's, it's absolutely true. ridiculous. <laughs> pasta power the first time i heard pasta power i lost my mind i was like that is so funny that they're just yelling oh dude there's a 
There's yeah, also like one 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 episode where he's like powering up and he's like fettuccine, linguine, spaghetti, mozzarella, and I'm like, what? it's not <laughs> even best... about anything. No, the best part is like you you show me where in the first few cartoons the obsession is over finding pasta. It's like mushrooms <laughs> and flowers. Like it's not it's not like, like the Ninja Turtles. We all knew the Ninja Turtles love pizza, right? In every form of Perfect. Ninja Turtles, they love pizza. But in, in Mario, I don't ever remember I like Luigi becoming a coward works. Mario just nonstop lusting over this Italian <laughs> cuisine boggles my mind because he never stops. It never stops. And then usually in most episodes, he ends up getting food at the end and then he's happy. But it's not even like he's motivated by saving the princess or Toad or Luigi or the world. He's just whatever he's got to do to get some grub. Like anything oh. fucking goes. I love it. I lo- and then yeah. the way that those two are constantly like playing patty cake and fucking rhyming with each other. And stuff. Yeah, I love when they came into the prison. They're like, what are you guys up to? And they're like, we're just playing patty cake. What that's is what this? I know. <laughs> patty cake, patty cake, plumber's man. And that's how they always get out of situations. And every, like you said, every episode is, is in classic like 80s, 90s cartoon style. Uh, just kind of like a standalone where they just get into some random situation and then they find a way out of the trap. One that'll never leave my head was there was one where they got uh, buried in like, or they got, they got like thrown into like a hole and uh, they ended up flooding the hole and then they just let the hole fill with water and they just swam up as the water filled. And then they got to the top and climbed out. Perfect. And I've, 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 I've never forgotten that because I, this is gonna make me sound stupid, but I've always thought to myself like, would that work in theory? In theory, yeah. I think it's pretty dangerous. I don't know though. Maybe like, there's no way to it. climb out as long as you can swim and keep your head above the water. But it was like, that was how they solved. Like Bowser's like, they'll never get out of there. And then all they did was fill it with water and then swim to the top. And they were like, we're out. Thanks for giving us a really easy way to get out there, King Koopa. Yeah, and I was like, um, well, that was that was 15 minutes of my life. I'll never get back. Um, I also there was like there was like one moment where I saw something that I was like, oh, that's pretty bananas. And that is in the uh, I, I'm mostly talking about the Wild West episode because that episode is so bananas to me. Sure. And um, there's like a scene where like Mario and Luigi have been arrested by the sheriff. So Toad is like hiding behind the sheriff's office, like lighting the bombs and throwing them inside the sheriff's office. And I'm like, first of all, you're gonna kill Mario and Luigi doing that. Second of all, that's like that's that's a demonstrable act of terrorism that you're yeah. committing <laughs> right now. <laughs> I love I love just how frequent the bombs are in this in this show too. Like the bombs are like it just it feels like three out of four episodes just came down to finding and using the bombs properly. In, it, are bombs in Mario 2? I can't recall. Yeah. yeah, those red birds sometimes drop them. Or you'd like pull yeah. them out of the ground as like a vegetable. Um, yeah. And uh, that kind of stuff. I, I, actually love, I actually love that game. Me too. I love Mario 2. And that's that's where I wanted to go too. I wanted to... Oh, okay. So I want to talk about the power-ups. But before we do that, uh, I, I would, I'd be awfully... I'd be so mad at myself if I didn't bring up... I think Princess Toadstool's voice is pretty part of the, it's pretty at normal, just sounds like a, it, yeah, I'm like, that sounds like, sure Princess, works. I said, I imagine her sounding like the Toad voice is cash uh. money. Like, I, I like Toad in the Super Mario Brothers movie just fine. But when Toad talks like this and he's got the hard Brooklyn accent, I'm really like, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a bird, you dumb bird. And he's just so Get angry. off me, Boido. <laughs> he sounds like a gangster. I fucking love it. I love Toad. Toad has been like, I when I play Mario 2, I'm always Toad. And a lot of it has to do with this cartoon because I thought Toad was so funny. <laughs> In this I'm fucking gonna cartoon. make you an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just like he's like the smallest one, and he's like the cute little guy in the blue vest and the diaper with the mushroom hat that he can take off and use as a parachute when he it's has a parachute. To Amazing. On. But he's got the voice of like he'll fucking he'll kill you. I just <laughs> I had to shout out the Toad voice. It's my favorite. I like I actually very much enjoy uh, Bowser's voice too. Like it's yeah, not Jack I, Black, but it's pretty good. But that guy, he's also in the 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 live action ones sometimes as like he plays like a, like an army drill sergeant in the live yeah. action. Yeah. yeah. But then he's also the, the king of the Koopas. And it's, why is yeah. so many of them have Brooklyn accents? <laughs> Including Koopa. Did Including he live Koopa? in Brooklyn? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I love it. Oh man. Oh, so it wasn't Toad just the, yeah. 
Oh, Toad's the best. It's not just the voices, though. It's just the sheer number of, like... Um, and this was always one of the highlights to me. It was like the sound effects, the music, getting to see the different enemies, getting to see it when they'd get like, dude, every time they got a fire flower, I lost my fucking mind. Lost yeah, it was my always mind. really fun. Right? Uh, especially to see like princess get a fire flower because we never got to see that. And then to see her get to like the different color dress because she's got the fire flower now and stuff. Um, I always enjoyed that. And there was just so many other references to Mario too. Stuff like the pulling up the vegetables. And throwing vegetables and stuff like that. Like it is, it's, it's, they're clearly in the world of Mario 2, but with Bowser. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I think it's, it's charming weird. too, the way that they, the way that they, they present this show because it does make you feel like you are in a bigger version of the game world, which is, which is how you want it to be. Totally. And, and that's where I think sometimes the way they go to stupid settings, like, oh, now we're, we're in the wild west now we're in fucking outer space now we're in antarctica or whatever it almost kind of works because that is what most mario games do with very little rhyme or reason you're just suddenly in a different world made of completely different things yeah so it, it, it kind of it kind of it kind of worked i don't know i it sounds stupid but i i always thought i was like yeah fair enough i i get it kind of all right fair enough now, granted, um, I think the writing here is just horrible. I think the writing is, is is just just horrible, and it's probably why I don't think this show holds up that well. See, I, I think the writing is horrible too. I think, but I think the reason it does hold up to me is at least they like they do the number one thing I care about, like, and that was I I get to see these classic bad guys that I know, and I get to hear the sounds I know, and I get to see some of the power ups I know, like the veggies and the and the fire flowers and stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I know the story is probably going to suck. I just want, I just want to see like the classic, the classic things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to yeah, see him riding on those ostriches and stuff like that. And I guess that's like the same argument that you could have for the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is, in my opinion, just a long episode of this show. Um, but like, you could have that same argument that's like, yeah, I went there to see you know, Mario encounter a bunch of bullet bills and that's what I saw. Yeah, you I, know. yeah, I mean, I, fuck that fucking movie. Like, I like that movie because I'm nostalgic for it, but I'm like, I genuinely feel like this cartoon has more references to the, like, I feel like more people working on this cartoon watched the, or played the games than the people that worked on that movie. Yeah, I'd because probably say like, it's true. A, a Goomba is not a semi-dinosaur made of toad. Like, yeah, but like, at least they've got like, I don't know. If, I don't know if the people that that worked on this cartoon played the first game, but they clearly played Mario Brothers, too, because every enemy Definitely. from Mario 2 is in this fucking game. But like you said, they must not. Have, they must have never gotten to Birdo because they didn't realize that Birdo's not a bird. For fuck's sake. So stupid. <laughs> so, couldn't quite figure that one out, dude. Couldn't quite figure um, it out. And then, yeah, just shout out to Fry Guy. Shout out to Mouser is the, the star of the show, in my opinion. Mouse is I agree. fucking hilarious. He's like he's like the bebop of this show. Total. That's a great <laughs> a great compare. He is totally King Koopa's bebop in this fucking and like he's got that stupid. Is it like a Russian accent? I don't know what the act. It just it's so over the top and it just sounds so sinister. And then like in one episode he's a sheriff and then in another episode he's like a a, a forest ranger. Like he's always got these stupid <laughs> jobs. <laughs> oh man oh, the show is fucking super so there's one always... where he's like he's like a he's like a pirate captain i think yeah at some yeah. Point. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's had every job and he's, this time i will get them and then he always loses and then bowser yells at him and then it, they come back and do it again bowser's oh. accidentally oh. just got like seven or eight phds that he just kicks around yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, man. I love it. Now, so uh, you know what? I love it too. I, and you know what? Like I came in pretty ready to trash it, but then like some of the points you made, I'm like, oh, there is some charm here, dude. I, I sat even, downstairs, even if it's stupid, which it is. It know? is stupid. It's horribly dumb. But I sat downstairs last night and watched probably four or five episodes, and uh, like by the end, I was I wasn't like sitting there being like, man, I need to marathon this whole fucking series. But I was like, yeah. I genuinely enjoyed myself for the last ninety minutes. Watching this stupid show and watching yeah. Mario and Luigi play play fucking patty cake while they try to defeat Mouser at his different job every week. Oh my and god! And this show, this show, show, for those who don't know, in Canada at the very least, maybe not in the U.S., but in Canada, this show is completely on Amazon Prime Video. All fifty-two episodes are on oh, Amazon Prime Video. Yeah, I know that. So I'm that's right. The DVDs. 
Which is also like a great way to experience them because there's probably, because I watched it on Prime, I probably didn't get like the charming menus with like the music and the colors and stuff. No, the menus weren't anything to write home about. Like they were clearly just, yeah, they were clearly like, let's just get it out, DVDs, but I don't care. I get to watch my old cartoon and it was fun. I I would love to see a Mario Brothers cartoon today. I don't think we'll ever get it because now movies are clearly where their bread is buttered. But I would love mm-hmm. to see another shot at it. Man, can you imagine what they could do with a cartoon now with the number of power-ups and enemies and worlds and shit they have to work with? It would be like, unreal. and It would be unreal. But I, I don't know. I think it would be hard to... I don't know, though. I'm saying it would be hard to pull off. But if you just did... If you span off the movie into a cartoon, I think people would watch it. People would like it. Oh, yeah. Me too. But I, I think yeah. the, like we're going to get another... We're going to get another movie. That movie made so much money. We're going to get a lot of it, those. If not um, a few. My, my brother and I were talking about this the other day where we're like, superhero movies are over. It's video game movie time. That's oh, what's yeah. going to happen yeah. now. Yeah. Video game movies are the... are the, are the that, That's the new... Until people get bored of them, that's the new thing. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're, quick, we're all done with superheroes. All set. Quickly... Well, I mean, I... Yeah. I don't want to spoil anything because I know some not people not everybody's following it, but like if you've been following the news with superhero movies, it sounds like maybe they're they're Done. like well, we're out of ideas, so we're going back to the start line again. But well, that that's I don't want to get it. That's a different. That's a whole different show. Um, oh boy. Quickly, uh, I didn't watch the Mario Brothers three or the Super Mario World cartoons as much. I was just getting a little older at that point, but I have gone back and watched. I do remember the I remember the Super Mario Brothers three cartoon in particular primarily because we got the koopa kids and i'm such a huge fan of those seven kids and it, so i have a i have a really good story about the super mario brothers three show what do you got? um when i was a kid um the show had been out for like 10 years right i was born in 93 and so the show had already come out and happened and i was not there to catch it on actual tv so i would like i said i would catch it on like limewire um and things like that. But then one time we were at Walmart and for like a dollar ninety nine they had a VHS tape that had um two episodes of Super Mario Brothers three on it. It had Never Koopa Koopa and a totally magic adventure. And so I was like, Mom, it's only two bucks. And she was like, Whatever, it's two bucks, I'll buy you that. I took it home, I watched it, I I adored it. I absolutely loved it. And I only loved it because I was a kid who liked Mario and I, you know, it was all sure. my favorite characters and stuff. Yep. I went to my friend's house that weekend for a sleepover who was also obsessed with Mario and I showed it to him and he was like, wow, this is amazing. How many times should we watch this? And I was like, (laughs) what do you mean? And so like we decided that we were going to watch this VHS tape, which to be fair is a 22 minute tape on repeat until we got sick of it. And over a weekend, we watched the tape 52 separate times. I love it. <laughs> I, but I feel like every kid, every kid had a couple of, v, like, I had a couple of VHSs. My aunt used to record, like, cartoons, just random episodes of, like, Garfield. Gar- yeah, Garfield and Friends was one of them. Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, this. Like, just whatever was, she would just, like, randomly, like, record them on her VCR and then send me a VHS with little, like, five or six random episodes of random cartoons. And we would just watch them over and over and over. That was part of being a kid, I think. I love that. And then when you see an episode now that was one of the ones you watched over and over as a kid, it's just like, holy shit, I still remember all of this. And yeah, I, yeah, I, that, totally. that's a special. Nostalgia is a powerful jug. It's a powerful jug. I, I like that. We, I, watched, uh, um, we watched all the Mario World on, on LimeWire. And the Mario World one, I think, might be like, objectively the best one sure but it's also plagued with how annoying and stupid yoshi is oh that- really? I, I <laughs> yeah. hate yoshi. oh yeah because i guess he would have been in super mario world eh he's yeah and they like, made he's gotta be like the jar jar binks of this his character show. his character is like that they because he's like hatches out of an egg they made him like a baby character and he talks like this the whole time and it's like oh, so God. so awful Sorry, Mario. I didn't know any better. Oh, like it's very, fuck. it's so terrible, dude. I could watch that. That would fucking kill me. Fuck that. Although but I had, I don't although, think I watched it. I don't think I watched the Mario World one. 
Although and one I thing I really liked about the Mario World is that the show is that Bowser's Castle, which was in a lot of episodes, was accurate to the Super Mario World castle. Oh, really? That's fucking awesome. That's yeah. pretty dope. I, I think, oh, there was also, oh, man, there was an original character in the Mario World show called Ugtar, who was like a little caveman kid. Why there was a caveman kid, I do not know. Um, But like... He would just, like, muck about and get himself into trouble, and, like, every episode would be Mario and Luigi be, like, having to get him out of this dumb, crappy situation he's got himself into. <laughs> oh, man. Ugtar was the best! I forgot it, all about Ugtar. It, it feels like every cartoon needs that, like, bumbling character. Like, everybody yeah. just needs that one that just keeps, like, causing problems, and I, I love it. I... Yeah. I, yeah, I don't remember Super Mario World. I do remember watching Super Mario Brothers 3 a little bit, and I remember being so excited by the Koopa kids because I thought they were awesome. I used to draw them all the time. I thought they were great. I loved the introduction. It had, like, the music blocks, and it had, like, the raccoon tail and stuff. Like, Super Mario Brothers 3 is such a Yeah, and it had, like, that really... Game. It had, like, a cool narration that was like, Welcome to the adventures of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Will, will Mario be able to save the princess, or will... King Koopa prevail or something like that. But if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Mario 3 didn't have the the live action. They just went to the cartoon. No, yeah, just straight they cartoon. The, they dropped the live um, action. And they made uh, one thing I did find weird about the Mario 3 cartoon is that not all of the Koopa kit like like the Koopalings, not all of their names were right. Um I forget what they call Wendy. It was like they call her like Peachy or something like that. No, it's not that. It couldn't be that. It's like sweet sweetie or something like that oh really well well they thought birdo was a fucking bird so they must not have read the fucking manuals that's all <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fucking yeah. i dude is it, is it does it bother you as much as it bothers me that the koopa kids get literally like no fucking respect today like you no i know you played mario respect. wonder i played it and like great fucking game but fuck bowser jr sucks he sucks I I agree. I do agree. So I d I played through all of Wonder. I thought it was great, and I thought there was a lack of variety, as I have felt with most two D plat or side scrolling Mario games. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I disagree on that because I thought the the not the, not to do a Wonder review, but like the Wonder Flower made everything so zany and all. Like that was what I was excited about. Every level was that, seeing what the the flower did. That it was the cool thing. I I more mean just like the the character variety and boss fights. It was like oh yeah, oh, the boss fights were awful. You fought. Bowser Jr. like five or six times, and it was the same fight. Every yeah, time. he was he's he just sucks. And the Koopa kids are so cool. Like they look cool. They're so like they're the highlights of Mario Three and Super Mario World for me. Even if the fights aren't anything to write home about, like I just mm. and that was like I like I have the Mario Brothers Three DVDs back here too, and I want to sit down and watch them just to see the the Koopalings and they're like to finally see them get a little bit of love. But oh getting, oh um, we're it just came back. To, it just came back to me. They called Wendy Cootie Pie. Oh, her name was Co Cootie Pie. <laughs> well, because she had cooties. Duh. I suppose so. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what but... I'm saying is they never call her Wendy. It's not a nickname in the show. Cootie Pie is her name. And there's a couple other that are wrong. And I don't remember what they are. No love. No fucking no love. love. Man, no. this has been maybe the least professional, but one of the most fun episodes of Remember the Game I've done in a long fucking time. I, Hell yeah, I, dude. I, this was a blast. I, it's, I fucking love this stupid cartoon. We're not even giving it a score because there's nothing to do. I'm just, we're going to end this right away so that we can listen to the fucking rap again one more time. Um, oh. So what I probably Because you have did, to hear it three at three times per episode anyways, so. Yeah. Well, if I did it right, because <laughs> they had like the, they had the original, hey, Paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And then it was the one with them live action in front of the cartoon. Then we got the cartoon rap song. And then it always ended with, do the Mario, swing your arms from side <laughs> to side. And I'm going to put that in at the end, I think, because I, Perfect. I'm just a big child. I love this. Bradley. Uh, if people want to come by and, and, uh, and talk more old cartoons off LimeWire with you, where can they find you? You can you can find me on Instagram at the Gaming Odyssey, or you can find me on Twitch at Video Game Odyssey. That's where you find me. I like it. That's nice plugs. That was easy. Those will be in easy the uh, the description of this podcast as well if you want to check it out, um, buddy. Thank you for taking time out of your Monday morning to uh, just reminisce about stupid old cartoons with me. I really appreciate it. I wouldn't wouldn't have missed it for the world, Adam. Do the Mario swing here. From side to side, come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario, take one step 
And then again, let's do the Mario all together now. You got it. It's the Mario. Do the Mario. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go. Do the Mario. Take one step. And then again, let's do the Mario all together now. Come on now, just like that. And that is going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Bradley, thank you for giving me a call and talking the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. And again, I'm so fucking sorry that I don't have the name of the person that sent me these DVDs. But you are a legend. Thank you so much for the gift. I'm fucking, God, they suck at life. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can feel free to message me and I will apologize more as is my Canadian uh, heritage. What, whatever. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, that's it. That's it. I guess there's nothing else to move on to. That's just the end. Of the, fuck, this show sucks. That's just the end of this week's episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Hey, listen, if you didn't hate this show, maybe leave us a nice review, would you? I'm not sure what they accomplished, but I know that I'm supposed to be asking for them. So uh, leave us a good review. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, if you want more of these, patreon.com slash remember the game, baby. $3 a month gets you started. There's over 500 ad-free podcasts over there waiting for you. Download them right onto your phone. Listen to them at your leisure and become a better person for it. Uh, I'm also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash member the game whenever I feel like getting on there. So hit me with a follow. It's free. It'll tell you when I'm online. You can goodbye and say hi. I have a P.O. box. Hit me up at remember the game podcast.com. You'll find the address there. Just send me a letter or a postcard. Don't send me a gift because I'll fucking forget who you are like an asshole. Uh, I'll write you back and we'll be friends. And don't forget, you still have until November 19th to donate to my extra life campaign. 20 bucks goes all to the hospital and you get entered into prize draws to win some video games or some remember the game swag. You can find that at remember the game podcast.com as well I think that's everything I think I'm gonna leave yeah I'm gonna thank some patrons and get out of here I'll be back tomorrow for those patrons with my Spider-Man 2 spoiler cast it'll be game patch on Friday and next week it's a whole other slab of podcasts including hopefully assuming I can get all the recordings and everything done in time our burnout revenge episode of remember the game take it easy everybody talk to you on the next one cheers so long goodbye do the Mario Remember the Game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I turn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the Senior Executive Vice President level or higher uh, at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I am contractually obligated to thank every single one of you as quickly as possible. So a huge thank you to... Ah, uh, it's frozen. We're still getting to the end of the list. Here we go. Make sure Mellow Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, The Keeks, James Clark, Dave McGee, Dan of DNA Gaming, Slick Rick, Doug Doran, Chris Fleury, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Fraser Burns, Lil Bunny, Fufu, 89, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Care, Scott Brooks, Aaron Lawson, Nathan Tromley, A Town, Morgan, Zane, Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9, PSX, Mercury869, Wolfgang, Darren, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic 21, Squints, Titan 420, Zonko 504, Jeff Bergeron, Captain N, Daniel, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy Barrage, Just a Fish, D's Nuts, Holmes, Zach Shepard, Ballsack, T Bagger, Frosty Feet 492, Triple, Chugger 22, Elijah Burns, It's That Nerd, James, Midam, Nudis, Nudzish gets me every time dbxj jameer williams steve dalk mizuru juris dr mario tyler phil lencher joe the sandman eric james nick amos mega mav thomas childs biddy laces out damp beaver boy c spin thomas smith nicola leroy westrich rushes dog walker stud still smash matt babanu gabe dan fuselman fuzzy 99 decoy man a dude named adam why the surgeon who's not a surgeon row blaine the hoagie man scary terry storm beagle archangel ataku o- otaku why is that fucking with me all of a sudden? Earl, Hagel, Waffle, High Plains, Drifter, Esteban, Navarro, Kayach, Jimothy, Chris Williams, Oroku, Saki's Gardener, Cody Richardson, General Fury, Dem Boys on the Roof, Max Lagroom, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Franklin Badge, Jugs Bed, okay, Sam Carpenter, Donnie the Dude, Walter, Nerdy Hybrid, The Fletchman, Colin Bollinger, Sleeper Hit, Squeak Nuts, Isaias, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, WMFP, Wimp. 15, Christian Gabriel, Maverick Marty, Radioactive Man, Musty Beetle, Graham Kennedy, I My Foot, John M. Watkins, Timothy Sabrinsky, Beef Dingleberry, Hitchy Poo, Chevy Boy 9211, Burt Macklin, Quiet Place Queen, Cam Nelly 23, Christopher Britt, Zamatos, Big the Cat, Bobby Litton, Brandon DeZeba, Kia Pop, Knife Goes and Guts Come Out, AB Killen, Works For Me, Dakota Guy, Alexander Camps, Neil Cooper, Tom Houlihan, Ted Explosion, Ryan Perry, Alex R, Lucas Valadez, Itchy Nutsaru, Mr. Papa Giorgio, Just Car Pranks, Rated X, 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 X Elite. Ha! Ah, that's I get that one. Dark Skywalter, Postman, West Gen, Nick Creature, Tyler Kokoluk, Kokuluk, Adam Martinet, The Big Deal, Doctor Nightmare, Twenty Three, Kevin Monroe, Can't Destroy Her, This MF, 
Mario Galaxy still hasn't reviewed out of blank. Piers of War, Because 19, Digital Dave, Marcus Mendoza, Lord Longrod, Von Hugendon, the second, Roger Stahlbach's pool, Stahlbach's pool Cleaner, Frosty Bear, Max Sandin, Sour Goat Face, Alex Ramos, Faded Sufferance, Benjamin Atkins, Carbon Fiber Zombie, Chris Hill, aka Chipspot 2000, Mellow Yellow 8787, B Money, Higher Goons, who? It's OG, Tyler Bauer, Fallen Snow Kiku, The Supreme, Chosen Rizzo, E Man, Trucker, Mark Sneed, Raging I Irish, Atria Wormwood, Shoeboxers, Tornado, Adam Blank still isn't reviewed. Mario Galaxy, Jay Callahan, Robbie Air, Guy Who Does Things, Sabin, Brian Richmond, Blobby Rogers, Loose Cappin, Bula, Matt Zeus, Buy Me Bone Storm, Plow King, Cesar, Fill Up My Mouth With Farts, Liquor Like Luigi, Cody Thompson, Billy and the Clonosaurus, Elephant Calf, Scissor Fist, Big Daddy Randall, Ryan Whitcomb, Flinny123, Austin from Past the Present Player Podcast, Lord Stay Puffed, Johnny Zubu81, AJ McCurgy, Lotus, Philip Ramsey, Nothing Could Possibly Go Wrong, Alex McIntyre, S, Bearded Bastard, Adam Galaxy still hasn't reviewed Mario Blank, Eric Hopewell, Clockwork Orange These Nuts, Tess Tickle, David Schroeder, Theodore, Chicken Gizzards, Diablo Spartan, Justin Blair, Wilco, VOS Ranger, and Captain Steven. Woo! That wasn't the worst one. Yeah, that one was all right, Molly. Molly? Molly left. File was good. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.